well. How y'all doing? I hope y'all done had a Merry Christmas. We moving on into the new year. And of course, my family done requested one of my famous red velvet cakes. Now, I don't know how you cook your cakes, baby. But I cook mine with love. And it's delicious. Now, some of y'all like that store-bought stuff. I don't fool with that store-bought red velvet cake because it don't taste right. It's got to be made from scratch and made with love, baby. Okay, so we're going to get started. I know y'all been asking me to show y'all how I cook things. Let me go ahead and break it down for you, okay? I got a bowl. This is for the uh, uh the dry, okay? This is for my dry uh, ingredients. This is for my wet ingredients, okay? Don't mix them all in the same thing or you're going to have a problem, okay? Dry and uh wet. I'm going to pour it on over in here. And we're going to mix it all together, okay? So we're going to start with the wet. So we're going to start with the dry first, okay? Now, this ingredient, uh, this uh, recipe calls for several ingredients. As y'all saw at the beginning, it's, I got a lot of stuff over here. So I'm going to start off with my dry. This recipe calls for two and a half cups of all-purpose flour. Okay, I got me some white lily flour. Okay, you can get whatever kind you want. I use great value sometimes if I go to Walmart, Publix brand, whatever you want to do. But I'm going to go ahead and open this on up because I brought a fresh bag here. Yeah, I've been cooking a lot since the holidays and things. Well, other people have been cooking, but I'm going to dip on in here. This is one cup here. Yeah, and I'm going to go on in this bag like so. And do like this. Hold on. Well... If I can get down in there. Okay, yes. And I'm going to fill that up like that. So I got me one cup. And this calls for, uh, sorry, that's supposed to be for, Lord, I done got confused. Okay, yeah, because that's going to have more. You put the, the dry goods in a bigger bowl because it calls for more than the wet. So you need two and a half cups of this here flour. Lord, if I can get in white lily, what y'all got going on? Okay, hold on now, because see, I'm going to have to scoop that out with something else. Hold on, that's what I'm going to do. Come on. Come on, our birthday. Okay, so that's one more, and then I got half a cup right here. So I'm going in there with a half a cup like this. Lord, have mercy. They don't want me to get to the flower. What I do to you? And I'm going to put a little extra dash in there, because that first cup didn't have enough in there. There we go. So there you go. It should look like this. Just a bowl of white flour. Okay, now I'm going to go in there with the recipe. Um, I do a little extra with mine. Okay, the recipe calls for one and a half cups of granulated sugar. I'm going to put two because I like my cake to have a little sweetness to it. I don't want no uh, salty uh, cake. On well, no a cake that ain't got no flavor to it now. I gotta have a little flavor. So I'll go in. So I'm gonna go in here. And I, you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna just pour it because clearly dipping it in there. It ain't gonna hurt nobody to use the same one for the flour. It ain't gonna hurt nobody. So I'm gonna go in there. Oh, kind of lumpy. What's going on over here? Okay, Lord. We got some sugar lump. Now wait a minute. Y'all saw that big old lump? Hold on now. Oh, this lumps. Wait a minute now. We can have, I'm gonna have to call them back and let them know. They got lumpy sugar. Okay, so yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and put that in there. They go one cup. And I'm gonna go ahead and put two cups. I'm being careful with that because them lumps by themselves probably make it more than what it's supposed to be. Okay, I'm I ain't gonna fill that all the way because all them lumps. Okay, now we got the sugar. Now we got some more dry goods. We done did the sugar. We done did the flour. And y'all, clean up behind yourself when you're cooking so you don't have a whole bunch of mess afterwards. Fold that back up and set it over there because you're going you to put it back in the pantry anyway. Okay, fold that up like this. Okay, and do that. Now, I need a teaspoon of baking soda. Don't use baking powder. Baking soda. Okay. If I can get the box... Lord have mercy, I should have pre-opened this stuff before we got started because y'all know I got some neck bones in the stone. I, I ain't got all day to be sitting over here talking to y'all about this here cake now. 
I'm gonna just open. I like to open it from the side, but it ain't doing right today, so I'm gonna just open the whole box. And then I'm gonna go in there with one teaspoon, not tablespoon. There's a huge difference. Y'all see, this is a tablespoon right here. This is a teaspoon. I'm gonna do one teaspoon. Okay. Okay, I'm gonna go in there with one teaspoon and smooth that across the top because you don't want to have too much in there. Okay, one teaspoon of baking soda. Then it's gonna call for one teaspoon, one teaspoon now, not table, of fine salt. Okay, one. Put that in there. Now, how many of y'all knew? Let me see who all knew this. How many of y'all knew that a red velvet cake is nothing but a mild chocolate cake with red food cutting and cream cheese? Like, did you know that? Yes, honey, you put cocoa powder, okay? And it only costs for a teaspoon of that as well. Don't, become, don't put two te to a tablespoon, you're gonna be, it's going to be real chocolatey, okay? But it ain't nothing but a mild chocolate cake. How many of y'all knew that? Mm-hmm. Smooth that on over because you don't want to do too much. And dump that in there. There we go. Yes, honey. Okay. Now, I think I got all my dry goods. I want to say I got everything. I know y'all probably said, Miss Chicken, how you know you did everything? How you know everything? Because I've been making these cakes since 1967, baby. And I just know what I'm doing. I just know what I'm doing. Now, sometimes I forget things, but... Okay, so let's rewind that back. You got uh, two and a half cups of all-purpose flour, Okay. You got uh, the recipe call. Oh, excuse me, Lord. The recipe calls for one and a half cup of granulated sugar. Now, if you like me, I like my stuff to be a little sweet. I want a nice, sweet piece of cake. Okay, I don't want it to be, you know, questionable. So I go ahead and I add two cups. Now you can do what you want to do. You can do one and three fourths, however you want to do. Okay. Now you're also gonna add a teaspoon of fine salt, a teaspoon of baking soda and a teaspoon of this here cocoa powder. Now I got Hershey's because I'm bougie. Now you can, you can get you whatever red and brand you want. You can do uh, whatever you want to do, baby, as long as it's cocoa powder. But I'm gonna tell you something about Hershey's. I've been eating Hershey's since 1967 and ain't did me no harm. All right, now, so I got all my dry goods. Oh Lord, I didn't get me no um, mixing well. Hold on one second, y'all just pause for a moment. Okay, I just got me a little regular spoon right here. I'm just gonna stir that up in there because I'm not doing no heavy stirring right now. Just make sure it's all mixed up in there together. Mm-hmm. That's all I'm gonna do. Okay. Now, I really feel some type of way about them sugar lumps. Now, over here in this one, I'm going to now imagine if you had all of this in this little bit of bowl. That would have been a problem. Now I'm gonna put that right here out the way. And I'm going to add all of my wet goods, okay? Now, for the wet goods, so you got two eggs at room temperature, two large eggs at room temp. They need to be at room temp, okay? All right, now, you're going to add your one cup of buttermilk, okay? Whole buttermilk, not that fat-free, whole buttermilk. And pour that on in there. And it needs to be at room temperature as well. Okay, sugar. Now, a little birdie told me this secret a long time ago. You actually, it's better when you're baking to use corn oil when it calls for vegetable oil because corn oil actually brings more moisture. So vegetable oil will do if you don't have it. But this is what I use. And so the recipe calls for a cup and a half. Y'all know me, I'm gonna do about two cups. But since I've got corn oil, when I do vegetable oil, I do two cups. Since I have corn oil, I'm just gonna do a cup and a half, like it say. So I'm gonna pour that on over here. And I'm gonna do my half cup right here. Oh, you know what? I got one of them guys. There we go. Half a cup right here. Uh oh, I'm spilling over. So now, we've got, let's just follow back. We got the corn oil or vegetable oil, depending on what you got. We got the buttermilk. We got the two eggs. 
We're gonna do a teaspoon of vanilla extract. Okay, get you some vanilla extract. Uh oh, if I can get it open, Lord. What's up with these products today? Oh Lord, Jesus, give me strength, Jesus. There we go. See, the Lord do it for you every time. Just a teaspoon of that. And pour that on in there. And then, believe it or not, this recipe calls for white distilled vinegar. You're going to do a teaspoon of that. Now, why? I don't know. But I know I use it every time and my cake is always good. So, I don't try to eliminate stuff I don't understand. I do what the, what the, the rules are saying. That'll preach right there. You may not understand what he's doing, what instructions he's giving you. Now, you may not understand why he's telling you to go left. You may think it's better to go right. But see, if you don't follow one instruction correctly, you're going to find yourself in a world of destruction. So, y'all just listen here. I'm teaching better than y'all listening. All right, so I got all my wet goods except for, let's see, we got the vinegar. We got the, uh, we did the vinegar, yeah. yeah. We did the vinegar. We did the buttermilk. We did the oil. We did the vanilla extract. And now, the main purpose, the star ingredient, okay? Now, you got to do two tablespoons of this here, of this here uh, red food color. Now, listen, you may think, oh, I don't need a whole thing of it. All right, you're going to be walking around here with a, a pink velvet cake instead. Pour that on in there like that. Okay. I messed around one time and ran out of it and said, it'd be all right. Honey, that cake was just as pink as it wanted to be, about pink as my robe. I said, well, it tastes the same. Y'all better eat it. So put that in there like that. Two tablespoons of the red food color. Okay. And we're just going to close that back up because I don't want nothing drippings to get on nothing. Okay, now we have everything. We got now, now you're going to mix the wet goods with the dry goods, okay? So here go my dry ingredients right here. And I'm just going to, well, you know, before I do that, let me do this first. I'm going to stir it up first because that oil, see that oil just sitting at the top of it. Y'all see that? So just stir that in there a little bit together. And the oil ain't gonna too much mix with the buttermilk, but that's okay. You just wanna get it mixed in that good before you pour it all over down the wet bit. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now you're gonna see some little bubbles forming. That's all right. That's just the vinegar and mixing in with the oil. All right, now. Pour that on in there. Look at that. Woohoo. All right. All right, now, so it's time to mix. Don't y'all be laughing at my heel belt. I done told y'all I done had the growth since 1967. I don't know where the pink will go, but this will do just fine. I got the bowl, it's here. Now, the next thing you got to do is you got to oil your pans. I got two circular nine inch pans, okay? And I'm just gonna drop a little bit of a corn oil in there. And I'm gonna show y'all what, what I like to do to make sure it get good and cross that pan. Okay, because you don't want, uh-oh. Well, okay, Alberta, you're doing too much. Okay, now, you're going to just take a paper towel like that, and you're just going to rub it in there. Look at that. Make sure it's a clean paper towel. Somebody ain't rubbed the snot or wiped the fingertips on earlier. And just smear it in there like that. You see that oil glistening off of there? Mm-hmm. And just make sure it's nice. And this is already a non-stick pan. Hey, the boy, hush now. 
So I'm gonna just do this like this. We'll be down to the last straw. We get ready to make this here uh, cream cheese icing. Don't you go to that store and buy no cream cheese icing. Don't you do that. You make it from scratch, here. Yeah? Now, this is real simple. I got a little strainer so because I don't have a sifter. I probably need to get one, huh? And I'm going to use that for my confectioner sugar. So you need powdered sugar, confectioner sugar. You need cream cheese. You need unsalted butter, okay, unsalted butter, and vanilla extract, and that's all you need in another mixer. Now, you need to sit it out before you get started, let it get room temperature too, because you're going to be struggling if it's not. So, now the recipe calls for uh, just, I think they say one cup of cream cheese, but baby, um... It ain't enough cream cheese in there for me and for all the sugar they want you to have. I don't want, the icing can't be so sweet. The cake already got sweetness to it. So y'all know I did my own version of this recipe. So I put both. I used two cups of cream cheese and the recipe calls, also calls for four cups of that powdered sugar. I only do three because it'd be too sweet, baby. It'd be too sweet. I said, Lord, you can't even taste the cream cheese. Okay? So, that's what I do. I recommend you do the same if you want your cake. Cream cheese icing to taste like real cream cheese icing. Okay? Now, if you like your icing real, real sweet when you do it like this, when you eat it, then that's on you. But I don't, I like mine to be sweet enough. Okay? Because the cake is already sweet. So, go on there and drop your two things of cream cheese like that. In there. Well, if it will come up, Lord. There you go. Put that in there like that. I can't believe I'm telling y'all my red velvet recipe. Y'all blessed. Because I don't tell everybody how to cook it now. Okay. Now, you're going to take you two sticks of unsalted butter. Look at it. Say unsalted. Okay. Make sure it's unsalted. You don't want no salty icing. Now, you probably say, Miss Jenkins, I don't have no unsalted butter. I only got salted. It'll work. It just ain't going to be about the same. But, you know, I've had to use salted before when I thought I had unsalted in the fridge and I didn't. I was already about done with the icing. So I'm going to drop them in there. And then I'm going to just eyeball this vanilla extract. It's a teaspoon. I'm just going to go on in there like this. Yep, that's good enough right there. See, when you've been cooking long enough, you know you know about how much something is. Okay, now, this recipe calls for four cups of, of this here powdered sugar, baby. I'm not doing all of that, okay? Because one thing I don't want to do, Lord have mercy, Jesus. Well, I'm gonna try to open it. My hands greasy from the butter. But, um, I don't want my stuff to be so sweet. Can't even taste the cake, you know? So, get you a fine, uh, a uh, strainer that got fine holes in it. Or get you a, uh, a sifter, whichever. But you're going to do like that and just let it go on through like this. Because if not, it'll make lumps. And you don't want no lumps in your, your icing. So that's one cup right there. Y'all see all those balls? That's what you're trying to get rid of. 
You're trying to get rid of those balls because you don't want those balls to get down in there. And then you have lump, lumpy icing. See those lumps? I don't know if y'all can see that. All those lumps. You don't want that in your icing. So you just sift that on out. And we are done, baby. We done. Now all we got to do is mix this up. And then I'm going to do everything off camera because I'm going to tell y'all what y'all need to do because I'm tired. All right. Y'all know I got some neck bones in the stove and I didn't intend to be up here all night with y'all trying to tell y'all how to cook this red velvet cake. So here we go. Got my mixer. Now make sure you start that deep down in there because if not, the powder sugar gonna fly everywhere, okay? Go ahead and mix it on up. That's all right. It ain't gonna hurt you. Now make sure it's gonna get it's gonna be a little stiff around the mixer, but that's okay. You just once it gets stiff, you pull it up a little bit and let it mix itself and drop down back in there. Now I'm gonna taste it and make sure it tastes. Yeah, sit right there. Now, if your icing is pure white, you did something wrong. It need to be off white, an ivory color. If it's pure white, I mean, you got too much sugar in there, and it's going to taste like sugar instead of cream cheese, okay? You want it to taste like cream cheese icing, okay? So, that's good right there. I'm going to let my grandbabies eat on that icing because they love stuff like that, baby. Now, I'm a little upset because the pans was being disrespectful, and the cake didn't want to come out, so it crumbled a little bit on the sides. But that's okay. It's still moist. It's still moist. Hold on. Let me taste it. Make sure it's moist. Mm-hmm. Yes, that's some moist. Yes, it's gonna be nice. So hold on one second. Okay, y'all can see here where some of my cake broke off. Don't be trying to talk about me. I don't know why my cake was being disrespectful, but that's okay. It's still gonna taste good. Y'all see my homemade icing. Get you a nice icing spatula. Don't be using no butter knife for this, honey. You're gonna get messed up. Now, back in my day before I got fancy, I did use a good old butter knife. I did. But, you know, I done, I done elevated. I done upgraded and got me a good old icing spatula. So, all you're going to do is just slap that up on top of that cake like that. Yes, honey. You're going to smear it on in. Okay? And listen, I wasn't going to show you all this because I figured if you didn't know how to icing a cake, then, honey, you far gone and you don't need to be doing this recipe anyway. But I didn't want to do that. I said, well, let me at least try to show them the, the gist of it. So the bottom layer is done already. It's icing in the middle. Then I put the top layer on top. Okay, I hope y'all following that because I'm not going to go back and do it. Now, I'm just going to smear this over like this. And you're just going to keep covering. Layer it, okay? Use every piece of that icing you got. Ain't nothing wrong with just slapping a good bit on top of it because it's going to fall to the sides and then you're going to smear it from there. Okay? We'll be back in a second. Well, I'm done icing. I am irritated because my grandbabies came in here and did some things and now my cake is not looking like I want it to be. But that's okay because it's still going to be delicious, baby. You follow this recipe and I promise you, you will be satisfied. Okay? Just like I am satisfied with you. Mm, 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 mm. Okay, now, I got some crushed pecans. Now, listen, if you're allergic to nuts, you're going to stop here and there go your cake. But if you like a good good pecan on the top, a good garnish, a pecan garnish, you're going to sprinkle that right across there like that. Ooh, we honey. That adds some color to it. And you're just going to go on and sprinkle it around here. And, yes, you can put some on the sides if you want to, too. 
Please don't put no big old whole pieces of pecans over there. Who's gonna eat a big old whole piece of pecan? Get the crushed, do you a favor and get the crushed pecan pieces. I can't stand people who hand me a red velvet cake with a big old huge, just, just crack the pecan and just put it on there. No, baby, get some crushed ones. You don't want no big old whole piece up there because then when it gets stuck in your teeth, you ain't gonna be able to enjoy the cake for what it is. You can be too busy chewing up pecans. Nobody wants the pecans is just an additive. Okay, it ain't it it ain't what what the cake is fully about because you can't have it without the pecans. Most people from the south gonna tell you ain't no red velvet cake if it ain't got no pecans on top. But you know, some people got allergies and some people don't like nuts and things. Now I personally like the pecans on there. Somebody had to try to put some walnuts one time. I said, no, baby, it ain't walnuts, it's pecans. Don't put no almonds, no cashews, no peanuts, pecans. Okay. Some people be trying to be extra like that girl put them doggone, uh, what's some things called? The doggone um, raisins in the mac and cheese. I said, baby, we don't do that around here now. I don't know where you got that from, but we don't put raisins in the mac and cheese. We don't put celery in mac and cheese. I done seen some foolish things, honey. I sure have. But baby, this cake is so beautiful. Oh, she's so beautiful. She's got downright disrespectful earlier trying to come out the pan. But baby, look at that. That's a pretty cake right there. Ain't she cute? Look at her. Yes, honey. That's a pretty red velvet cake. What you gonna do with it? I'm gonna eat it. <laughs> I'm gonna eat it. Not by myself. No, not by myself, baby. I can't eat all them sweets and things, honey. Okay. You do like that, you're gonna end up with dentures at age of 32. And we can't have that sugar. You want to have your teeth in your mouth as long as you can. All right. Well, that's all we got, honey. We got us a good old southern red velvet cake. And um, we're going to slice into that and we're going to eat it. Yes, honey, it's going to be delicious. And y'all have a wonderful, blessed evening here. Yeah? All right now, I'll see you later. Hey, sugars, if you like that video, why don't you click over here in one of these areas and watch you another video. And I'll see you in the next one. Make sure you eat some cake for me too, huh? All right now, bye-bye.